Welcome everyone to a fun match here between Consul of Rome as the Empire against a quick battle player as the Vampire Counts. They will be battling it out on Glacial Lake with some very nice and interesting army compositions. A few surprises here to come today, but in the back line we do have three units of cavalry, one here being the Black Coach, which is one of the heaviest models in the game, very difficult to stop. It has its three abilities, Black Nimbus, Unholy Vigor, and Black Sight. So all three here are uh, recharged if they are engaged in melee. We also have the very expensive Blood Knights here in the pocket. They are exceptional with their bonus versus large, anti-large, the very nice Frenzy, and the flag of the Blood Keep, giving them that plus 22% missile resistance when not engaged in melee combat. We have the cheaper Black Knights here, with the bonus as infantry, anti-infantry, and in the front line, the very quick, the ROR, the Dire Pack Wolves. The ROR version here will be having bonus as large and anti-large, and with that very nice strider, allow them to whip around the flanks and shut down their backline range. Four units of zombies here in the front, and they are going to be supported by the Dumble Elite Grave Guard with great weapons. These guys are bonus as infantry, anti-infantry, armor piercing. For the hero choices today, we do have the White King, who has Scab's Grave, Heroic Killing Blow and Foe Seeker, alongside a Necromancer. He will be here today having that nice restoration due to Master of the Dead, as well as his Forbidden Rod there coming in with more mana. In the sky, three units of Felbats will be supporting alongside a Blood Dragon Vampire Lord, which today will be having quite a few abilities and spells. He will be having Heart Piercing, Helm of Discord, Sword of Anti-Heroes, Ray's Dead, Gaze of Nagash, Dance Macabre, as well as Invocation of Nahek. So a very nice VC build here, and for the Empire, five units of Swordsmen in the front line, two units of Halberdiers, one on each side, alongside two units of Flagellants. In the back, we do have two units of Expensive Blood Knights with that very nice 78 charge and those flaming attacks. Here protecting this pocket, which has two units of Free Company Militia and four units of Cheap Archers. So it's a very cheap range here in the pocket, but very, very wide, so it can be very good at dealing with all that chaff. For the hero choice today, we do have the Bright Wizard here in the pocket with his nice Flaming Sword. He will be having two spells today, which are the Flame Storm as well as the Flaming Sword of Ruin. So we're not going to see any Fireball or no Burning Head here to deal with the Chaff, but that Flame Storm could be exceptional damage value here up against the Grave Guard. In the front line, we do have the Cheap General of the Empire. He's going to be nice and cheap coming here with Stand Your Ground and Hold the Line. Going to be very good for that encouragement and just allowing his front line to fight just that little bit longer. And the last unit today, and something I really want to focus on, is going to be this gorgeous Luminarch. This bad boy has a massive 1137 armor piercing missile strength. Also, having those flame and magic attacks, going to be very good up against ethereal or regenerating units. He also has Locus of Hish, giving that reduction to power recharge rate, as well as Aura of Protection. So we do hop into the battle here. As we can see straight off the beginning, we are getting the Luminarch targeting the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord. As you can see, a little bit statuesque from the VC player. He is starting to move off the beginning, but hasn't moved his Lord. He has seen the Luminarch. He can see the damage value that is about to come through. And it looks like it hit twice there up against the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord. 1,000 damage value dealt there up against this big entity. And that's a lot of damage value. If you do manage to get a few more shots like that, we'll just have 30 more shots coming out of the Luminarch. Could get some very good damage value here. If we do skip on here to the frontline hits, ooh, a very nice Gage of Nagash here going down the front up against the Jumper of the Empire. Can't quite see his health here. Looks, oh my god, yeah, he lost at least 30% of his hit points there. Very good stuff there from that Gaze. For the front line, you are going to be seeing the unit of Felbats coming on top of the Luminarch, but they do get trapped by some Swordsmen. If we're able to get this Luminarch to flip around nice and quickly, we could get some more damage value. Invocation of the Heck has been forced here, healing the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord, which means going to be reducing that mana in the later game. Front line is going to be coming, a nice counter charge here with the Empire Knights, and in the front we are going to see the, blood, uh, the uh, Black Knights here charging into the Swordsmen. We are trying to get the die pack walls through this pocket, nice and thin formation trying to get them through here, but they are going to be getting shot up against the archers and the free company militia. They do have zero armor and no missile resistance, therefore these guys are exceptionally weak to range. Over here on the left we do have the blood knights as well as the black coach coming on that left flank, and they have a good opportunity to whip round in the flank here and shut down the archers. 
Oh, and it's like we do have the fillbacks coming over as well. Nice Flamestorm going on over here. Let's have a look. Flamestorm done up to 50% damage up against the Grave Guard. Some really good stuff. It looks like it is just about to miss the zombie stuff. So we do have the Die Pack Wars here on top of the Free Company Militia. And the rear charges here coming in for the Blood Knights and the Black Coach. In the pocket here, we are going to be seeing the Vampire Lord just going over the top. And it's like it's going to be a breath spell here on top of the flagellants. Let's have a look here. So it did manage to kill ooh, 25 models. That's not too bad. Although I probably would have preferred to see that damage value on top of the general of the Empire. Managed to kill him. Give that negative 16 uh, map wide there to the Empire on that leadership. Meaning Terror is going to have such more of an effect here in the later battle. Losing the Dire Pack Wolves here. Unfortunately, these guys are going to go down relatively quickly. But we do have the Blood Dragon Vampire on the floor. I'm very susceptible here to the Luminarch. Brilliant damage here in the pockets and very good work there. We are going to have a very good zombie summon, shutting down the archers in the back line. We do need to start seeing some more units come through to the front. We don't want to be seeing three units here fighting up against one unit of swordsmen. Try and get these guys around the flank and shutting down this back line. Archery. We can see the Black Knights trying to shut down the Free Company of Militia. Some good work. And it looks like a Helmet Discord going down. So Helmet Discord with a negative 24 melee defense. Going to be given the Knights of the Raising Sun zero melee defense. Over here on the right, we do see the Elite Grave Guard going up against the Swordsman. They will chew for those relatively quickly. Looks like he is going to be stroking his rod there in the back on his own. Getting those, getting that more mana there. Oh, a nice Flamestorm going down again. Doing some tremendous damage value here up against the Grave Guard. Some very good work there coming from the Bright Wizard. Already doing 61 kills. Although he did actually happen to ward there into his own Flamestorm. Oh, Oh, big hit there going up against the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord. The Luminarch has done some tremendous damage value. This uh, Vampire Lord is down to 2.4k health. You can already see his healing cap. Some exceptional work here coming out of this Luminarch. I'm a little bit surprised the VC player hasn't targeted the Luminarch so far. He has the mobility here with the Blood, Dra Blood Dragon Vampire. He also has Sword of Antihero, so that nice armor piercing as well. And Dance Macabre for the increased melee attack. He could really snipe out this Luminarch if he wanted to. In the back low, we do have the armor-piercing Grave Guard. They will be going after the Luminarch. Only 60 armor on this entity, but we do have the very brave Bright Wizard alongside the double swordsman here coming to the Luminarch's rescue. With the Unbreakable Fragilence here in the front, these guys do need to get involved as quickly as possible to try and get as much damage value and help out their Sigma brothers. Four units of archery here are going to be shooting into the Blood Knights, but uh, once they are engaged in melee, they won't be getting that 22% missile resistance. In the pocket, though, we are going to be having the Blood Dragon Vampire fighting up against two units of Halberdiers. They're both Bonifers Large, Anti-Large, and Armor Piercing. A very risky strategy here, sending in the General of the Empire up against the big, big Blood Dragon. The Blood Dragon can do some tremendous damage value up against the General of the Empire. The General of the Empire doesn't really have too much armor. Oh my god, big hit there coming out of him. Very good stuff. He doesn't, he's not bonus as large, he's not anti-infantry, and he really doesn't have much uh, armor piercing either. So a little bit surprised to see him there involved in this combat. So we are going to see the White King get involved that nice leap there into combat. And we are going to see the Free Company the Militia are going to be retreating. The they are also going to be wavering. Losing in combat, but the Black Coach coming through should help uh, terrify this unit. So like they have been terrified as this very nice Black Coach does come with terror. In the back, though, the archers are going to be struggling up against the Blood Knights. Blood Knights are going to be all over the place, getting damage value left, right, and center. They do need to be shut down this Luminarch, however, stopping him from shooting. We also have the Grave Guard in this pocket. The Grave Guard needs to come in and help support the Blood Dragon Vampire. He cannot be winning this on his own. He needs his infantry to come in and do some good damage value. We also need to be shutting down these Batline Archers. These Batline Archers have been very busy. We need to get some more raised dead in the back and get those zombies on top of the Archers. Maybe try and see if we get the negative 8 leadership there just to push them off. Two units of Knights of the Blazing Sun are very weak, but they will be able to come over here and deal with the Blood Knights. If they do get the charge, they have a massive 78 charge bonus that could do some very good damage value up against the Blood Knights. Both having over 100 armor or equal to 100 armor, making them very tanky as well. We do have the Swordsman here, very brave coming in, trying to protect their Luminarch yet again up against these Blood Knights. This Luminarch needs to keep moving so that it cannot get pinned in place here up against these heavy Blood Knights. In the back, we are going to see the Blood Dragon Vampire. He's very close to his healing cap, maybe three, four hundred away from his healing cap here. And it's going to be terrifying both units of archers. We need to be getting these Unbreakable Flagellants in to help deal with the Blood Dragon Vampire. We do have the Great Guard in as well. It would be nice to see an Invocation of the Heck go down here just to heal both of these entities and maybe heal them up to max. But as you can see in the back here, we are going to be having the Elite Grave Guard just carving through these archers. Coming down here with the Blood Knights, 10 models left with only 800 HP. 
they're going to be really struggling in this latter stage of the game. And as we can see, this Blood Dragon Vampire just needs to keep moving. We do have a target shot here. All oh, going straight through one model of the Blood Knight. That Blood Knight had a bad day for sure. Nine models left here. Would like to see the Luminar maybe try and see if he can finish off the Blood Knights. Oh, this could be brilliant. If you manage to get the uh, Knights of the Racing Sun to rear, rear charge you up against the uh, Blood Dragon Vampire Lord, he might not be able to get into the sky here. This is hilarious. So because of the uh, melee attack here and the animations, it's not going to allow the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord to get onto the sky. Meaning he is going to be continuously getting recharged here by the Blood uh, by the uh, Knights of the Blazing Sun. But in the middle here, we are about to lose the Blood Knights. They are going to be crumbling. 100 HP left, negative 19 leadership. Viking is going to be in the pocket with Foe Seeker and Heroic Killing Blow. And we do have the Necromancer here in the back just stroking his rod. But as we can see, the Grave Guard with the Great Weapons are going to be coming through and they will absolutely carve through any infantry here from the Empire today. As you can see, the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord is still trying to get away, but uh, to no avail, he's not going to be able to get it anyway here today. And also going to be getting shot by the Double Archers. If the Luminarch does eye him up though, if he does stop, he could be in big trouble. Looks like Heart Piercing is going to be going down, sort of anti-heroes as well, but the big shot coming out of the Luminarch could... Oh my god, yes, it has killed him. Brilliant stuff. That's going to be negative 16 leadership here for the undead. As you can see, the Grave Guard are going to be struggling. Negative 16 due to Lord recently died. Some very good work there. Luminar can come in and maybe try and see if he can assassinate either the Necromancer or the White King. So the Necromancer isn't too important anymore. He was there just to give wins and magic to the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord. But now that he's gone, he has no spells himself. So there's not really too much to worry about. As you can see, the Black Coach, though, is phenomenally healthy. And this is a little bit worrying here if you are the Empire player. He's a very mobile unit that's very difficult to pin in place that also has terror. But you still have your German of the Empire. As long as you can keep him alive, this is definitely winnable here for the uh, Empire. Although it is starting to look a little bit bleak. Looks like the Flagellants here are really trying their best to get onto this uh, White King, but this White King is doing a tremendous amount of damage value. That 90 armor is going to be very difficult with the low armor piercing here from the Flagellants. We do have some more Brave Swordsmen of Sigma coming in, but I, I just don't think there's enough left here. We do need to keep shooting the Black Coach. It only has 60 armor, so you can still get some good damage value here with the Archers. It has quite a nice hitbox, but it's almost impossible to pin into, into uh, a nice standstill. Luminarch cannot move while shooting, so it's not going to be able to shoot up against the Black Coach unless it accidentally gets trapped. We can probably move it on here just a little bit. There's not too much that happens. There's a little bit of a pocket here of a fight, and the Black Coach just keeps charging. And as we can see here, the Black Coach is just going to keep moving and charging through these archers, and the Luminarch is going to be eyeing up the Necromancer. Nice shot there up against the Necromancer. Some good damage value there. Pretty much killing that model. And will ensure that it does go off the battlefield here due to crumbling. We do have a few units here coming in the back line. Two units of Halberdiers and it looks like a unit of Archers. Those Halberdiers are going to be exceptional if they do get some good damage value up against the Black Coach. As you can see, the Black Coach is going to be pushing after the General of the Empire. If he does break the General of the Empire, it could be game over here. So a nice shot here going down against the Black Coach. Banners of Power really pulling into the VC favour. As you have a very healthy White King and a very, uh, well, not a less healthy Black Coach now, but still healthy nonetheless. He is going to be crumbling under the negative leadership, but still lots of mobility, and he can chase after the Bright Wizard. The Luminarch does have one ammunition left, so it could get a good fire here onto the White King. A nice shot onto the White King could really flip the balance of power. We still have the Triple Archers and the Double Halberdier left. These guys do need to get nice and involved quickly, so they can hopefully save their General of the Empire. Oh no! That is so unfortunate! The last shot here coming for the Luminarch, unfortunately killing the General of the Empire. That is so sad to see! No, so that's going to be a negative 16 leadership there to the Empire due to the Luminar killing his own Lord. No, that's devastational. But as you're going to see here, we do have the Black Coach coming through with that nice charge. Just absolutely carving through knife like butter here up against these archers. Terrifying them and pushing them off the battlefield. I don't know if the leadership is going to be able to hold here. It's going to be very close here up until the end. Going to be chasing after that black coach. Can these halberdiers hold on? That terror is going to be really difficult to deal with. It looks like, yep, they have been terrified. The halberdiers will be going. Can the second unit of halberdiers get the charge and get that nice 15 bonus there to leadership from charge? No, they're going to break, and that is going to be the loss as the Luminarch does go off the battlefield. 
What an interesting end to the game there, and some nice interesting units here, including the Luminarch. Some very, very good stuff here coming from both players. Unfortunately, not able to say the uh, player's name here, but I will call him the Quick Battle Player. He did play very well today, so well played to him. 104 kills, 1,770 damage value for the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord. Some really good stuff. I probably would have preferred to see him maybe try and snipe the Luminarch earlier. 20, damage, uh, 20 kills there for 110 damage value, but the Necromancer obviously there for the Winds of Magic. But 1,100 damage value for the Viking, 54 kills. And 275 kills here for the Graveguard Great Weapons. 1,360 damage value, 16,000 damage da uh, value dealt. 71 kills, 360 damage value for the Graveguard. 68 kills for 620 for the Black Knights. 202 kills, 1,750 damage value for the Blood Knights. Blood Knights doing exceptionally well here alongside the Graveguard. Fortunately, the Felbats really not doing too much, and only 13 kills, 93 damage value for the Diapat Wolves. That's such a shame. With no armor, these really struggled here in the middle at the very beginning of the game. 152 kills, 1,450 damage dealt. So some really good stuff there. The value is actually exceptional here coming from the Black Coach. Considering it's a single entity, that's some really, really good work. But commiserations here to Console of Rome. And thank you very much for sending in a loss as well. It's always good to see these really, really fun, excellent games. Only 48 damage value for the General of the Empire. A bit of a shame for him. That was probably one hit there on the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord. But uh, 63 kills, 840 damage value. Those Flamestorms uh, do some really good damage value here up against the Graveguard. 23 kills for 100, 44 for 300, 89 for 250, uh, 150 here for the Swordsman, and 260 for 78 kills. Swordsman struggled very much here up against the zombies in the front line, and uh, 500 damage value and 200 for the Halberdiers. I've, I expected a lot more from them, especially when you've got key targets such as the Blood Knight, the Black Coach, the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord, and even the White King. And you can even get some good armor piercing value here in the Graveguard. It's a shame that they weren't utilized a little bit more there. Uh, I think they were fighting up against those entities, but obviously Helm of Discord being exceptionally powerful, giving these guys pretty much zero melee attack. 83 kills for 400 damage value for the Fagellants, 31 kills for 1085 damage value, getting most of their damage value finally up against the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord and probably the Blood Knights. I think I saw them fight against the Blood Knights there in that mid game, uh, they were able to pin there. And also, in this matchup, I really like Fagellants because they are unbreakable of course, admitting that Terra really not going to have so much of an effect, so you can really have that frontline hold for exceptionally long. And we have four units of archers here with 28 kills, 1,400 damage value, really good stuff there, over quadrupling its value, some very good work. 21 kills for 940, 710 for 18 kills, and 644, all the archers at least doubling if not getting even more than that damage value, really good stuff from those archers. 16 kills for 330, 580 here for the second free company militia, this backline range doing exceptional work, really holding and making this game nice and close. 56 kills, 980 damage value for the Knights of the Blazing Sun. 82 kills for 1,900. I really like Knights of the Blazing Sun. I think they're a fantastic unit. The only problem with them is, they, of course, they are exceptional glass cannon. These guys are very easy to break. And obviously, if you use Helmet Discord, they only have 24 melee defense, meaning they go down to zero melee defense if they do happen to get trapped in that Helmet Discord. 16 kills here for the Luminarch with 4,500 damage value. That's some exceptional damage value and probably the most I've ever seen from a just a normal Luminarch. Some really, really good damage value here for 12,000 damage dealt, meaning you probably got about 11 hits in there. So some really good work here by the Luminarch. That would have been almost entirely up against the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord, as well as the Black Coach. So some really good stuff here coming out of this model. The ROR does come with a net as well, so that's something also to consider that you can use in this matchup. You can net things such as the Blood Dragon Vampire Lord, or even what would have been really handy is netting the Black Coach. If you net the Black Coach in the end there and got the charges with the Halberdiers, it could have been very good. And also in this matchup, I always like bringing in a light caster. A light caster is really good when partnered alongside a Bright Wizard. You can either overcast it for an area of effect or you can net certain units such as the very difficult to stop black coach but guys what an interesting and awesome game i hope you really enjoyed it if you did please leave a big thumbs up i'd really appreciate that drop a comment down below about what you thought about the battle and if you are brand new here maybe think about subscribing down in my description down below you can find my discord where you guys can join and meet all of the awesome guys in my community and talk about all things warhammer other than that, I've been your boy Logic. I hope you've enjoyed your stay. Take care of yourself during these times, and I'll see you all during the next video. Take care.